Hi, Heather. How are you doing? Hi, Scotty. How are you? I'm Great. awesome. I'm really excited about this one today. Yes. I see that you're wearing your uh, Radiant Red Octopus <laughs> t-shirt today. Not only the t-shirt, but also the pants that and match. The... I'm wearing my octopus outfit today. Your octopus outfit. <laughs> so could you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today? Yeah. So this is exciting. It's summertime here. I'm designing for um, Blue Sky Playworks and we're doing a uh, summer line for uh, summer 2022. And so we're experimenting a little bit in the studio. And uh, today I decided let's try to do a octopus uh, wind chime. Um, but our bubbling technique has been so successful. People are loving watching it. Um, it's really fun to watch. Um, so let's try to bubble an octopus's legs, right? And um, see what it would come up, what it looks like. Great. Right? So um, one of the things I really uh, tried to do with this piece is go, where do I want the bubbles to be? Instead of just sort of doing a random bubble pattern um, all over a piece, which is terrific, it's a great look. But I thought about this one, what do I want to get from it? I want something that says, um, how can you use bubbles in a specific way? And Scott, what's the way specific it would be? Um, bubbling? <laughs> So I'm thinking tentacles. I'm thinking the tentacles. way that um, tentacles, uh, let's use it so a way an animal might actually have these types of patterning on them. And uh, this is the one that came to me first time. So I bought some really beautiful red. I've been down shopping in Victoria this weekend. I've got a gorgeous red. It's from Amico this time and it's called Radiant Red. And I'm thinking the red and white will be beautiful. And when I built the tent, or built the, um, the arms, Tentacles, sorry. Tentacles, yep. I twisted them a little bit so that when we painted, I'm, my plan is to have the outside of the arms a uh, nice solid uh, red, but I want the inside to have the bubbling technique. Right. And so hopefully when he's hanging there with all of his uh, legs around him, you're going to be able to see that. Uh, 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 be able to see it. The suckers. Um, yeah, the yeah. suckers. Yeah. I'm just going to... Come in here real quick. Sure. I really love the texture on your octopus. So this is a, that fantastic. nice distressed uh, hammered look. And um, my husband's made me all sorts of really fabulous wooden tools over the years. He thinks that they're quite funny when I ask <laughs> him to make paddles and things for the studio. But uh, no, it's real, it's for real. <laughs> this one is actually a drumstick that I use with one of those circular balls on it and just hammered away at him. And this is gonna be really neat because to have the uh, reflection and the way that things uh, reflect on angles mm. uh, with a shiny glaze, I hopefully that will look really neat. And I wasn't able to hammer the arms particularly well because to get them to sort of stay in this position in a wet clay, um, they would have been kind of smooshed by hammering away at them. So um, he's half hammered. <laughs> 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 so, okay, so let's get to it. Um, <clears throat> uh, the recipe for doing the bubbling is really straightforward. It's very nice and easy. I'm going to actually do up a double recipe because I don't want to have to stop and do it twice. Um, so basically, you're going to take uh, two tablespoons in this case of your underglaze. This is my beautiful radiant red in a glass. And you really want to get all of that in there. And just for you guys listening, we will put this recipe on the description under the uh, under the video. Right. And then, so normally you'd have three, three uh, pumps of your nice uh, liquid hand soap, nice clear hand soap, because then you can really see the color that you've got on there. It doesn't have a funny green undertone if that's the color that you would have had. Um, and the thing that I've learned is you don't want something that has a, uh, a really high moisturizing content because that can repel your overglaze. Mm -hmm. You want to use something that's just a basic hand soap. Lots of that out there these days, guys. So instead of three pumps, we're doubling it. It's going to be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I just do one for the pot, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how we make tea too. Yeah. And then basically you just want a little bit of uh, water to dilute it. So normally it's one tablespoon, we'll use two, one, and two, and that was just a bit short, so there we go. Okay, so it looks like very, very little, but you want this to be nice and thick um, because there's a lot of glaze, and glaze is a really heavy substance. There's a lot of minerals and a lot of um, things in there that are much, much heavier than the water and whatnot that has to support it. So I'm just gonna make sure it's really, really well stirred. And I made sure that my underglaze was really, really well stirred in the uh, container when I got it too. Okay. Alrighty, so, take your octopus and bake it at 350. 
So what I'm going to do is because I want the uh, bubbles to really go on the underside, that's the way I'm going to actually set them into my little um, pot. Okay, that happened. All right, there we go. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to have enough room to be able to do them all at once, which is really nice. I don't have to keep going back in and, uh, and redoing things. And it's just the it's just the tentacles I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about the head. He's just going to be solid red. Okay. So you want to have your um, your glass aimed at basically a 45 degree angle, and your straw is going to be down at that farthest corner, so right down in here. That's where the most of the air is going to come up and allow the bubbles to just fall. Okay. push a little bit of this out too. Look at how beautifully those are just setting on there. I like the, I really do like pressing and placing uh, my bubbles if I have a little bit uh, that I can do because you get some control. That's really quite mm -hmm. lovely too, right? Look at that texture already happening on there. Okay, let me do some more blowing. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, get some black into his little beady eyes. And uh, let's have him looking up a little bit. A little bit, like, he's so adorable. Where you put the iris and where you put things uh, in the eye really does make a difference. Like to me, he's looking up this way. And I think that always makes an animal look very endearing. And this is just a black underglaze, very okay. simple application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Are you talking? Are you talking to Grandma's octopus? Yeah. 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 So cute. Oh, you're going to make friends with him? Yeah. So, you know, this, this guy is very simple. He's just about color and uh, nothing really highly detailed. He's all about impact. Red is impactful. Okay. Right. And uh, this is the octopus with all its legs in order. You see? 
and the starfish that'll be attached. Okay, so now we're at the very tail end of the process of glazing. I have underglaze on the star and a little bit of soft yellow. I just like colors like that, just give a pretty soft little uh, pop of color. I've not been very uh, neat about any of this, but that's okay. So now I'm just gonna put on, the green is a high brilliance um, gloss glaze that will make the piece not only shiny, which will be pretty, but it also gives the piece strength. And when you're creating a wind chime, you need to have some strength uh, to your piece in order to withstand the clanging of it with the other pieces, because this is going to actually hang in the center of the octopus and it will actually um, bang against the uh, legs and make the noise. So generally we like to put two coats of uh, clear glaze over top and I'm going to let that one sit and then I will come back and get another coat. All right we're here in the kiln room uh, with Mr. Octopus inside <laughs> the kiln. Um, what, what are these things at the bottom called? So these are like our little pins here and these are what keep the, uh, in this case, the uh, tentacles from actually touching and coming in contact with the kiln plates. And these are quite fabulous. They, um, they're little tiny pieces of metal that are actually able to go into the kiln and not um, burn away. And so the, the part of the glaze will sit on top of these and uh, stay stay afloat. And then uh, and tomorrow when we open the kiln up, it just pulls away. It can leave a tiny little blemish or a bump and then we can just take a Dremel and clean it away. And um, so all of our little legs, as you can see, are all balanced on our, these little tiny um, lifts. And we've got his head sitting on the lifts as well because we glaze the underneath of it. So if water comes down, it's not going to absorb up into the body and then expand and then make the glaze um, fall off of the head, which does happen with outside pieces sometimes. Hey everybody, okay, so now we have, uh, we waited overnight and I put it in about midnight last night and now we're gonna open our glaze fire and see our bubble buckles. Ready? Woo! It's very red. He's very red and bubbly. Look at that. Nice, right? So that gives us some really cool suction cuppy um, tentacle look. I like it. Very cool. Wow, quite the red, eh? Mm -hmm. Kind of actually almost an orangey red, which I really like. It's very in right now. Very trendy. Very cool. And then his little face. Here we are. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and um, you sort of see where we, we did the highlights. It kind of gives you that little bit of more interest. Um, little uh, little bit of features happening there. Okay, so we're gonna take everybody out and then we'll go and start putting them together. See ya.